Welcome to HL7's Fire Implementation Guide Creation Training. For the next day and a half, we're going to fill your minds with as much stuff as we possibly can. The people responsible for this are, hey, hey, there we go, Dragon Basham, stand up. Senior, those who don't know him, Senior Architect and Advisor for Dreyer. Also has worked on Fire, C CCDA, and about everything else you can think of. He was one of the progenitors of US Core, so you can thank him or blame him for that. Sarah Gaunt, a Senior Information Analyst. Stand up, Sarah, with Lantana. She's been here for way too long, 13 years, uh, working in the UK, Australia, and of course, occasionally in the US. And she takes credit for way too many IGs, both in the CDA and Fire. There's me, Dave. Um, <laughs> thank you. I do a lot of things for Ready Computing. I'm also the CBCP co-chair. I just got elected to the TSC, much to my surprise. Um, and I'm a Fire IG author, and I also own the consent resource for people who want to blame people for something like that. The important people on the team, Lloyd. Lloyd McKenzie, if anybody, anybody here does not know Lloyd, put up your hand. Lloyd's been doing way too much in the fire community since before it was fire. And Melva, there's Melva. Melva Peters, co-chair of everything, uh, chair, chair of everything, and basically she ch controls the process and makes sure we do it all right when we want to get it published. Of course, Lynn does the actual work. Shh. Okay. Uh, Graham, did you want to come up and say a couple of things? Hey everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, the genesis of this tutorial was a request from ONC to us to scale a community of people who can uh, keep up with the demand um, driven by the US government around uh, deploying fire solutions and publishing fire implementation guides is a rate limiting step at the moment and hence this tutorial. So I want to thank the ONC for supporting us to do this. It's um, a big challenge when you're not a commercial organisation how to scale up when you're so busy trying to keep ahead of what you've already committed to doing that you don't have time to scale your community to help you do that. And, and so um, <coughs> you all know that we didn't announce this early enough. That's just, um, you know, um, a symptom of that underlying problem. Hopefully we will have start producing these more. But in the meantime, um, what will also be very clear as you go through the tutorial is that producing implementation guides is itself work in progress. We're not going to give you a final set of answers. This is exactly how it works. Instead, this is where we are today. Um, we will always be improving and changing things as we go. And, and I'm sure we'll collect a bunch of ideas out of this meeting and this tutorial. Um, so I want to thank the um, presenters who David just introduced, who also didn't get enough time for doing this. You know how it goes. <coughs> um, so and I want to thank all of you for coming. Um, and I hope that this is useful and productive and that you uh, feel empowered to step forward and help a community to grow and flourish by performing the role essentially of their record keeper and their um, catalyst for you know, improving in the discussions amongst the community. Thanks very much. All right, just turn this off so I don't uh, speak twice as loud. Okay, so we'll go over what we're gonna do for the next day and a half. Today is going to be the hard stuff. Yep, today is where we talk about what is an IG in general, but then we get into the specifics of how to build one. So how to profile it. We're gonna talk a little bit about the tools, Trifolia, Forge, uh, but mostly you're gonna be working in XML. And if the thought of working in XML scares you, you're in the wrong room. 
Although you can work in JSON, we would allow that. You can sit in the back. Uh, we're going to start off talking about an overview. We're going to talk, ask you for questions. All of you should have watched the three videos that were included. Did any of you not get a chance to do that? One person? Hey, that's pretty good. All right. Did you not see the list of what you needed to do when you signed up for this? You're fired. Wayne sent an email to everybody who was registered, I thought. Okay. Um, so those of you who, did everybody get the email from Wayne explaining that you needed to have the IG Builder, IG Publisher working on your laptop? That's the one that's pointed you to exactly which three videos we wanted you to watch. Anyway, so those who watch the videos can give, ask questions. We'll do a little Q&A about that. We're then going to go into the tools, uh, then talk about hand authoring using XML. And pretty much all your examples today and tomorrow will be using raw XML. We're not going to go through the tools because everybody has a favorite tool. We don't want to get into which one's better. So get ready to edit lots of XML, uh, mostly because it's hands-on exercises and then a little bit about managing the debugging process and QA. For tomorrow, tomorrow uh, we're going to talk about the HL7 publishing process, going through everything from PSS right through to final publishing. Uh, we'll talk about building and working with your community. Uh, source control, that's GitHub, that's FMM, that's all the things where we keep to, to making sure that your source is where it needs to be. We're going to do an overview of vocabulary, although on Friday morning, for those of you signed up, they're going to go into much more depth and much more interesting things we thought for those who couldn't make Friday, we would do about an hour of it. Uh, we'll talk about the Fire IG structure and organization, and then Lloyd will yell at you for quality for, for at least an hour. Something like that. And then, of course, open discussion, questions, anything you've run into, we will be open to. As well, if you have questions while we're doing this, please let us know. We are, are completely blinded by the lights in the back. I cannot see anyone in this room. Uh, but if you do have a question, try to make yourself known. Okay, let's get started. Um, what's a fire implementation guide? According to the HL7 website, an implementation guide is a set of rules about how fire resources are used or should be used to solve a particular problem with associated documentation to support and clarify the usage. That's clear enough, isn't it? No. Um, well, an implementation guide, very straightforward, is a set of constraints or an additional information for value sets, for supporting information, documentation, to solve a particular use case. That can be anything as big as implementing US Core for in Fire, to as small as creating a report, to as anything in between. It can include everything from profiles on resources right down to customized operations like bulk transfer. Why do we need them? It's a strange question, isn't it? Why do we need them? We wouldn't be in this room if we didn't need them. Um, because the fire specification is designed to be the platform. It defines capabilities, creating the ecosystems, and sta national standards and all vendor consortiums, everybody has their own use case. So you need to create an implementation guide. You need to explain to people how to limit what they're doing, how to limit their value sets, how to limit their, their work to match and solve that use case. Okay. Two different types of resource references, contents. So that's all the profiles, that's the value sets, that's a set of logical statements which implementations have to conform to. That's the constraints. You have to use this value set, you have to use this profile, you have to use this, this structure. There are almost always conformance resources, and I don't think we've had one yet that doesn't, although one, one I published started off not going to have one. Um, and then, of course, the examples. You need to have an example to, to show people what that means in the real world, right? And these are absolutely two very necessary parts. You can't just create the conformance statements and hope people know what's going on. You need to have the examples. Consequently, you can't only have examples because people won't figure that out. Uh, an application's capability statement. Now, that is how to create a server. That's how to create a client that may do other things as well. Identifies one or more, more implementation guides that that server um, that application conforms to. 
All right, so you're defining this is the implementation guide this application supports. And of course, documentation. Pros, graphics, logical models, all kinds of information to support and guide the people who are trying to use your implementation guide. Simply having, you know, the profiles is going to confuse people. Some things can only be explained in prose. <laughs>